Welcome to this edition of What Matters, and I'm here today with Lamois. <laughs> and I'm really, really excited. Um, as I told you last week, I was excited about this show. And as I said in my post, if you're a pearl clutcher, if you're sensitive, um, this may not be the show for you, but I'm thinking it very well may be, because it might open your eyes, expand your horizons a bit, and bring you some to some truths. So I'm going to let Lamois introduce herself, but before I do, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Lamois is literally translated in French, it means the me. The me. And she is a very much her, and, and I love her I intensity. Like yeah. um, I'm, she's a social media friend, that's how we started out, and I first connected with her in January of 2017. Mm -hmm. And she commented on a business post that I had made, and that led me to send a friend request, and then I started following her. But it's her honesty, her rawness, her humor, and her, her manners. She's full of manners. I love that. that. That had me follow her regularly. And by the time I got this platform, she was one of the people that I asked to please be on the show. Yeah. She honored me with, me with a yes, and I'm really, really grateful. So Lemoine is a, spo a poet a spoken word artist, mm -hmm. and an arts educator. Yeah. So now that I've told you what I know about her, oh, wait, there's another part. There's another part that's really, really important. A lot of people on social media that, that have a voice, that have a following, they like to live in an echo chamber. Mm. They like to surround themselves by ideas mm. and sentiments that are exactly like their own. Mm -hmm. And like me, she doesn't wrap herself in a bubble of similar views. She's very open to and welcome to other ideas, other um, perspectives. And as I said, one of the things I love about her is how polite she can be until she's not. <laughs> and that, that's always fun to watch. It's like a popcorn moment. So um, I'm going to now let Lamois tell you a bit about herself, how she's come to where she is. And one of the, my questions is the difference between, and I'm thinking one is written and one is word so the difference and clarify for the audience because you make it very distinct on your site the difference between poet mm -hmm. and spoken word artist yeah so here it is who are you lady how'd you get here tell us all about you yeah um my name is Lemoy. i find it easier to go by Lemoy. it doesn't really matter to me to be honest maybe it should but it doesn't um i'm 30 something and <laughs> i am jamaican born and I'm very proud of that, and that's important to me because that affects my perspectives mm -hmm. on the way that I see the world, on the way that I relate to people, and the way that I relate to, uh, relate to myself. I am a mommy of a beautiful six-year-old who is literally a mini version of myself. She, Scary, huh? oh, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's terrifying when you give birth to your, the trust. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but I give thanks for her because she's my catalyst. I've always said that I am a late bloomer. I'm the parent, um, I'm the child of two pastors, 
been raised in the church all my life. Uh, well, most of my life. And uh, so I was a late bloomer, I was very sheltered in perspectives. And growing up in a Caribbean household, I was silenced a lot. Yes. Right, we all know children should be seen and, and not, not heard. heard. You cannot right. have any opposing opinions. You can't say anything that is against your parents. And anything you say that isn't what they asked is rude. Right, right. <laughs> and so uh, growing up in that space, I was choking on my words a lot. I was choking on myself. I knew that I was meant to be more and bigger and bold, but I didn't have the space to grow. Mm -hmm. So I created that space. I am the firstborn, and I became this rebel without a cause, basically. Okay. Uh, and this happened at what age? Oh, my goodness. I would have to say 10, 11. Hmm. Yeah, around 10, 11, I really found my backbone, and I was like, no. You know, I started talking back a lot, which is not allowed. I started uh, voicing my opinions more. I started saying no. I started using words like, I don't want to, I don't believe that. And so that caused me and my parents to buck heads a lot. And I was fine with that. And so I realized very early on that I'm okay with opposition. I'm okay with confrontation. I'm not going to back down. I realized early on that my voice is precious to the world. My voice is necessary to the world. And a line that I have in one of my poems, no one was born with me that has the power to silence me. When I got that truth, I, it was over. It was over. <laughs> it was over. Well, following your posts and, and following the things that you, the conversations you initiate online, it, it's very interesting to hear that you were ever um, quiet. <laughs> it's very interesting to yeah. hear that you were ever quiet. And so was this desire to express yourself and be heard what led you down the path to become a spoken word artist? It was. I'm going to share a secret. So I have a speech impediment. Really? I do, I do, I do, I do. I have a really intense stutter. Yeah, I had to do speech therapy for a couple of years when I came to Canada. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually really bad. And really? so battling that, um, I really had to take a stand and say nothing, no matter if it's uh, physical, natural, spiritual, emotional, whatever. Nothing is going to stop me from voicing my opinions, from saying what I know I have to say. I believe that each and every one of us have a story. But more than that, our lived experiences, what we believe, is, is worthy of space and is worthy of air. And so I was writing poetry for a very long time, and I was terrified of public speaking. I was terrified of getting up on stage and... Um, saying stuff because I knew that there's going to be one word mm -hmm. that's going to hit me and everyone's going to know that I stutter. I remember being young and praying to God and asking God, make me so pretty that no one cares what I sound like. Interesting. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. And I gathered up my courage um, one day, I drove to downtown Toronto by myself. I told nobody. And I got up on stage, and I shared my first poem. And my life changed. And I realized that my purpose is the stage. But more than that, my purpose is sharing everything that is given to me. Because there's someone. It could, it could be just one person. There's someone that needs my voice so that they can find their own amen and i i there's a lot of things you said there that really struck me one i'm really surprised about the speech impediment yeah. um because you are so clear you are so articulate practice. um and you know practice practice can get you through almost anything but yeah. you know desire but something you said that i really hope that somebody out there that's listening that's watching that catches the replay heard and mm. i'm going to repeat it your story is worthy. Yeah. You are worth taking up space. Oh. Yeah. Especially, as you said, being raised in a Caribbean culture, 
um, we we are taught to small up ourselves. That's a mm. phrase that we use where you, you know, literally small yourself up. Mm-hmm. Don't take up so much space. Don't be loud. Don't be seen. Dim Just your light. Dim your light. Yeah. And there's a lot of us that think that our gifts are unimportant. Mm. That we think our experiences, because, you know, so many people have been through that, or people have been through worse, or people who have better, yeah. that it's not important, but your story is of value. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you, and that is one of the reasons I sit here, is that I believe that in sharing of ourselves, yeah. there's someone out there that you can touch, you can empower, yeah. you can inspire. And so that is why both of us are sitting here today. Mm-hmm. Now... Lemoy has um, a very interesting timeline. And if if any of you, you know, go on Facebook, you type in Lemoy Simmons TED Talks, because that's what <laughs> I did, and they will pop up. Um, you can also t- <laughs> and you can also type in Lemoy Simmons um, DM Chronicles and the list will pop up. But we have some here for you today. So one of the things, as I said, that I love about her and her voice is that she is very reflective. Mm. Now, there are a lot of buzzwords that, that are thrown around a yeah. lot recently, and one of them is toxic. Everybody toxic this and toxic yeah. that, and, you know, big trigger, and we may get the chance to touch on this, I is toxic it. masculinity. I love it. But um, one of the things that amazed me about Lemoy is that when she uses the word toxic and she talks about herself, she talks about her own toxicity, mm-hmm. recognizing it, what she did to mm. to clear it. And, you know, there was a post where you, you talked about being younger and being attracted to that gangster dude yeah. and realizing that he wasn't a problem, you were the problem. Yeah. It was your, your own messed up being yeah. that was attracted to this negative being Mm -hmm. and I love when people can turn and reflect on themselves and that's Mm -hmm. that's why I admire you so much is because of your honesty um and not everybody does that so when we come back from this break Anisha are you not proud of me (laughs) when we come back from this well time break we are gonna where are we going we going TED Talks are we going DM Chronicles first let's start with TED Talks we're gonna start with the TED Talks so when we come back from this break we're gonna touch on Lemoy's TED Talks Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity and our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties Team, powered by REMAX West. Welcome to Shadow Auto. Welcome back to this edition of What Matters, and I am here today with Lemoyne. Mm. Mm. So we are talking about um, social media. Today the topic is the art of conversation, online conversation. Mm. And the word art I think here is important because having a conversation is an art form. Yeah. And it's not just simply you speak, I speak. Mm. The component of listening is being missed the component of reasoning is being missed and a lot of times people just speak to be heard right yeah. they're not they, or they listen solely so they can respond they don't listen to understand no. and 
social media, I love social media. You know, people talk about spending too much time on it and so forth. I love it. It connects me with so many people. Yeah. I meet amazing people. Yeah. I reconnect with people from my past and people that will be part of my future. So I think it's a wonderful, powerful tool. But just like any other tool, it depends on what you use it for, right? You could take a knife and I could kill you, or I could take the knife and cut up a loaf of bread and share it amongst us. Right. There's nothing good or bad about the knife. It's what I do with it. I love that analogy. Thank and you. I'm going to keep that. Yeah, it's, it's really what you do with the tool. Yeah. So what I, again, you know, I, I, I'm just you know, fawning all over her, but I, I really appreciate her voice because of its honesty and its rawness and its truth. Um, do I agree with every single thing she says? No. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason that I grow yeah. because my boundaries are pushed and ideas are presented to me that don't necessarily line up with my own and then I'm forced into thought. Mm. And so that's what I appreciate is when someone can bring you content that's not just entertaining, mm -hmm. but is thought provoking. Now, one of these things are Lemoy's TED Talks. TED Talks. Her, her TED Talks. <laughs> and all of them end with one of these. <laughs> peace and I, I, I know a lot of people don't feel peace when they finish <laughs> reading them. Now, I'm going to give you some of my phase, and then she's going to go into um, expanding on what brought her to do yeah. these why um i'd love to hear some of the backlash i see some of the comments i don't know how you do it, girl but okay so here's three of my did i allude to three no i have four i have four favorites okay one if you base a woman's worth on her body count you don't love women and you are se sexually oppressed mm. ted talk next every man raised in a patriarchal society has misogenic tendencies they need to unlearn Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Please know all her TED Talks are one and two sentences long. <laughs> Here's the third one. You don't love men if you don't mm. hold space for them to show their emotions in a healthy way. TED Talk. Mm, right. And that's another thing I love about her. She loves everybody. <laughs> okay? It's not, oh, I'm just about women. She loves everybody. All mm -hmm. of us. And she wants space and safety mm -hmm. and communication for everybody. for everybody. And and this is why I like you so much. <laughs> and my, I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but I could only pick four because I'm not supposed to do all the talking. <laughs> um, stop having sex with people who think vaginas should smell like bath and body works. That's my favorite. I love that, that one. That one there and all the comments. <laughs> now, I can't read all the comments, but... You know, before I let her talk, this is an exact conversation that I had with this young man online. Mm -hmm. I saw his thing and he said, oh, you know, your, your vagina should smell like, like vanilla and what was it? Vanilla and lavender. He wanted to both those flowers. And I said to him, I said, that sounds like a yeast infection. Right. And then having to explain basic biology. So perhaps people should become acquainted with the basics of it. Before they get into it. And I think there's a lot of biology missing yeah. and too many video inserts in people's right. brains. So, Lemoine, how did TED Talks start? What what possessed you? <laughs> I'm not even going to say inspired. What in the world possessed you to do things like write in, in a big black square, white writing, Stop having sex with people who think vaginas should smell like Bath and Body Works. Well, why would you do this? Well, I... <laughs> your pastor parents. Tell me all about it. They're I'm blocked, by the way. They're blocked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love TED Talks. Um, when I am in a deeply reflective state, I will Google TED Talks and I will watch them. And I'm so moved by people who share their ideas mm -hmm. and share their perspectives nice and well. I can do that too. I don't have to wait uh, to apply to them to give me the space to do it. I can give myself the space. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. Facebook is a great tool if you know how to use, to use it. it. Right. And so I said, I'm going to use it to connect ideas. I'm going to use it to do what I do best. Use language, use my voice to not only inspire people, but to cause thought-provoking process. Right, exactly. I find that that's missing so much in mm -hmm. our online conversations, this thought-provoking process. We've Everything's lost, clickbait. Right. We've lost the ability to reason, to engage our minds in critical thinking. We're so used to seeing something, pressing like, 
and spewing out our first initial comment. And we don't actually sit back and say, hmm. And so I said, I'm going to start. And um, <laughs> I started. <laughs> oh, boy, did she ever. I started. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I started, and I, I realized that people, A, are attracted to authenticity. People, B, are attracted to bold statements. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do best. As a poet, spoken word artist, I, I get up and I do bold Read statements. Read that one out loud, girl. Some of your mothers taught you to hate women. And in your grown, unhealed state, you mask those lessons as preferences. Love, don't walk. Run to a therapist. Oh, my God. <laughs> Am I allowed to clap on my own? Oh my God. And that (laughs) TED Talk is geared towards men and women Mm -hmm. because we hate each other so much and don't realize why why and the ways that they come out. And so we mask them as well. I like women who are this. Mm -hmm. I like women who are this. I prefer women. That's fine, but why? But why? It Where did it come your from? Why? Exactly. Where did it come from? Who taught you that anything other than that is less and unworthy and undeserving of your affection or even your respect? Yeah, it, it's that. That's the thing that I find is missing so much is yeah. people connecting to why they do things. Right. You know, you 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 learn things, yeah. and. Your habits can be learned, habits are taught to you. When you're yeah. small, you're not autonomous. Yeah. And then we take, as one my, my, my co-host, Andrew, says, you know, we carry baggage. Mm. And a lot of that was, was packed for us. Right. You know, you're born and somebody hands you a bag. They're like, well, here, this belongs to you. And here's some of my beliefs. And then as we go through life, we pack them more. But it's time to unpack the bag, open the bag, take right. everything out and look at it. Is this mine? No. Right. You know, did this belong to me? No. Right. So where does that come from? Anisha, throw up another one. You go and have a favorite. <laughs> oh, I love this one. If you're a non-black woman dating a black man and you don't check him when he talks shit about black women, you're a part of the problem. A hundred percent. And I really want people to sit down, and you're right, and I always, I always say, what you do is very important, but what's equally and even more important is why you do what you do. Mm-hmm. So the TED Talks are specific, yet they're very vague, because it's to provoke thought. It's to hold up a mirror and say, am I this person? Am I complicit in the issues um, bound in this TED Talk? What do I do? How do I unlearn this? What is there to unlearn? You know, is it something that I own? Was it given to me Mm -hmm. in my baggage? How? And so, like I said, they're vague, but they're also very specific. Look at yourself. Ask yourself, do I talk shit about black women? Does my man check me? Do I check him? Right. Mm. Exactly. And, you know, there's something you said there about the difference between preference and dislike. Mm. And everybody is allowed to have a preference. Some people, they like dark skin. They, they're, mm. There could be a whole cycle, but that's what they're drawn to. Yeah. Some men like red hair and freckles. Yeah. Um, if you're a black man who likes red hair and freckles, which means chances are you're not finding it on a black woman, there's nothing wrong with that. You're allowed to have preferences. You're allowed to be. But if you absolutely won't, t- I don't like, yeah. you need to backtrack and break that down and, and right. understand right. why. If your preference is a reaction to what you hate, that's the issue. I see all the time, black women, we don't care. We literally don't give a shit. We don't care if you want to date not, not us. Like, we don't care. You you care about is the fact that you say I date her because I, I don't, don't like, like you. you. That's yeah. the issue, and that's when we'll cut our eyes and, and and kiss our teeth and you know and act in the ways that you think that we do. It's because mm-hmm. your your like of someone else is a direct response, response to your dislike of of, of us, exactly. and that always goes back to a dislike of yourself. Oh, okay. We have to go to break again, but when we come back, I'd like to, to put up a few more of your TED yeah. Talks before we go into the DM Chronicles. Um, and again, as I said, <laughs> on Facebook, you'll find her 
Me- that search bar is powerful. Just just type it in. And what is really interesting, it's not, like I said, it's not clickbait. If you look at the conversation that happens under the post, this is where all the thoughts and the redirection mm. and the examination comes out. So right after this break, we'll be right back with Lamoise TED Talks. I like it. My name is Anisha, and I'm the production manager of TCN Network. Have you ever wanted to host your own show? Do you have a message to share? Well, you're in luck. We are looking for dynamic and unique individuals to host their own shows. We are seeking people who are committed, motivated, and energetic. Do you want to be the next Jimmy Fallon, Ellen DeGeneres, or Shane and Ryan from BuzzFeed Unsolved? Start here. Fill out the proposed show form on mytcntv.com. We're here to educate, support, and build the community. Can you lead by example? Go the extra mile and seek knowledge? Are you humble, disciplined, responsible, selfless, and enthusiastic? Those are our core values. And if you identify with them, you could be part of a growing network that focuses on positivity and uplifting our community. We can't wait for you to join us on TCN Network and hope to hear from you soon. We're back. I'm here with Lama, and I'm going to keep saying it like that because it's like, you're no right. Punch. Yeah, <laughs> but we're here. We're talking about Lama's social media presence, the the conversation she brings online, the provocation of thought, mm. and we um, ended the last pet segment with the TED talks. Anisha, could you throw up another TED talk for us, please? So here we go. Go ahead. Oh, I love this one. If you hold black women to a standard of behavior based on what's proper and acceptable in society, you are low-key telling them to act more white, and you're not really here from us. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Thank you. She's just so gracious. So expand on that. Tell, tell, tell me about that. I think the black community especially, we are in denial of how potent white supremacy is in our community. And that usually looks like um, the politics of being respectful. Mm -hmm. And so I want people to ask, who told us that this way was right? Who told us that anything other than that is wrong? And I find a lot of black men, they always claim they love black women. But then they'll say, but the ones that are too loud, or the ones that are ghetto, or the ones that are ratchet. Uh, you know, the ones that dress a certain way, the ones that wear weave and blonde and purple and whatever, uh, they're not respectable enough for my protection. Or they aren't respectable enough to, wow. to, to have me love them in a way that all human beings should, should be loved. And so I want them to think, if you hold women to a standard of something that you've learned from society in being respectful and being... A worthy, mm-hmm. you're really telling them to act more white. And if that's what you're doing, you're not really here for black women to be who they are because we're not white. You know, that's not our culture. Um, I've always said I'm a very loud black woman. Black woman. I'm very proud of that. I'm in a restaurant on a date. I'm the one who's laughing like a banshee. <laughs> I'm very proud of that. I'm never going to be this you know, soft, demure, quiet woman. And if you're, if you're going to tell me that because I'm not like that, I don't deserve your protection, I don't deserve your support, then you're not really here for the liberation and the safety of black women in general. I, I can uh, liken that to, <clears throat> you know, the, it's funny, they call it the natural hair movement. It's so funny. I find it so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's um you know when people say oh well you know I went natural it's, it's went yeah went I, I it blows my mind oh, yeah. I've done a lot of things way before they were popular it's kind right. of what I do and I stopped perming my hair in like 1999 mm. <laughs> a long time ago and and then the only people to talk to about natural hair were were dreads 
like right. but people with locks because locks, there just yeah. was nothing else there mm-hmm. were no products it's now like a million trillion dollar yeah. industry yeah. there was nothing but it just made sense to me and I remember my mother saying to me, well, what are you going to do with your hair? Mm. And I said, I'm going to let it grow out of my head. (laughs) And she's like, just like that? And I'm like, my hair looks like it's permed anyway. Like, this is why I didn't understand what I was perming it for. And the idea that it wasn't okay to be me resonated so deep. Like, I heard her say, it's Mm. not okay to just be how you are. Yeah. It's not okay. It's not acceptable. It's not respectable. And so I, and even in terms of behavior, and, you know, loud, animated, um, gregarious, yeah. um, happy, yeah. joie de vie. I, I'd also, too, I think it depends on who's describing you. Right? right. And I think it all goes back to black women are not allowed to take up space. Not too much. Not too much space. Not We're not allowed space. to occupy the room. We're not allowed to fill spaces with our presence, with our vibrancy, with our light, because it's threatening. Mm -hmm. And it looks different. But that is our glory. Our glory is we are different. And if someone who says they love you is going to tell you no. Try to blend in just a little bit. Right. Blend blend in. Blend in. Blend in with who? (laughs) Right? and, And that's the question. Blend in. With who? Blending with them? Okay. Yeah, and that... I see. And that... You, I, and you see, and again, thought-provoking. Just, yeah. It's not always about agreeing or disagreeing, but taking a, an opinion that's given to you and analyzing it, taking it and turning, literally right. turning it over, turning it around, and seeing why it conflicts with yours. Why? That's why? the important word. That's why? the big word. And can you throw up another TED Talk before we move on to our DM Chronicles? Because... Ooh, sis. You may love black men, but if you share videos, pics of them in compromising, demeaning, and vulnerable situations, you don't like them very much. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now, when you say that, what, what, was there a video or something that was shared that provoked this? There was. There was a couple. Um, and it goes back to, we say that we love, but... Our actions tell us otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and social media is so big for sharing videos and sharing pictures, which is fine. I, I love that shit Me too. too. I, I like look. I I'm a voyeur. I like looking at I'm, your stuff. Right. I, I love really it. <laughs> but if you're gonna say on one hand, I love black men. I love my black men. I love my, my black brothers. But on the other hand, continually show um show and share videos and pictures of them in a way that is humiliating. And in a way that gives, you know, white supremacy an upper hand, in a way that has them in vulnerable situations, in a way that they didn't ask for it. Because remember, on one hand, there's consent. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we're sharing images of people without their consent in a way that is demoralizing on a platform that's created to continually keep us down. That's not love. Can you give me an example? Sure. Um, I was watching, I was on. I was online scrolling through, and I saw a video of a man who was clearly inebriated, mm-hmm. whether he was high or drunk, you know, whatever, and he was, like, wandering through the streets, and, and he was falling down, and he was, like, half naked, and people were sharing it and, and laughing. How can you say you love black men if this is what you do? This is how you share your love? You may, you may say you love them um, in theory, but you don't like them very much because this is a world wide web. This is your brother, and you're sharing him in a state that, A, he's not, um, he's not consenting to this being on this platform. No. That's, I, that's not love. I, I agree, and, and there's a lot of, um, you know, again, social media is what you make it. Yeah. Um, it can be very enriching. Uh, you can learn a lot. You can have a lot of good fun. And mm-hmm. and one of the things that causes me to unfollow people is when they continue to share negative images. Yeah. Negative in- images that don't serve a point, that teach no lesson, right. that, that nothing comes of it. Um, that's something that I don't, that I don't, I personally don't follow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, this 
again, I really invite you to take a look. Even if you're sitting at home and you're like, oh, I don't agree with anything that she's saying, take a look. Yeah. Read the comments. Look at the feedback and see if you can't reflect a bit on why you think the way you do and how you view things the way you view them. And I'm not asking you to change your worldview because I too don't live in an echo chamber, but definitely take some time to examine it. Now, here we go into examination, mm. conversation, <laughs> direct messaging, that, that beautiful little dark space where you can just <laughs> say things to people, you know, without everybody seeing not well, not so much. Well, no, it doesn't really work like that. No. So Lamois has the DM Chronicles in which she shares with us some of the things that happen in her in her mail inbox, in that dark space, in that dark space. And again, um, we will share some of them because you did give us some slides to share, <laughs> correct? Uh, but <laughs> one of the things, as I said, that I really, really appreciate about her is the fact she's so polite. You yeah. know, that is definitely a Caribbean-Canadian right. combination. You yeah. Know? The, um, the forced politeness of growing up and then just the culture that we yeah. live in. We're yes. just really very calm. We're very people. nice. Very nice. Everybody's, yes. everybody's always saying sorry. You know, <laughs> Canadian jokes. Um, and the thing that, that really con made me continue to read it is that it wasn't bait. She wasn't, you know, dragging anyone along so she could mm. embarrass them. As mm. you just said, not trying to show people up, you, you mm. show in love, so that she can have something to talk about. And I've heard several men in her, in her comments yeah. suggest that she cancel the whole DM Chronicles not and just happen. block everybody that doesn't please her yeah. and perhaps, you know, just stop doing this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, I feel their sensitivity is because they're also in someone's DM doing that same nonsense. And so they wish you would that. just stop. Yeah. So Lamar chooses to shine a light on some of the completely dysfunctional, yeah. ridiculous conversations yeah. and sometimes monologues because people really talk to themselves. Really? I have it too. Months of somebody going, hi, hi hello, <laughs> hello, hi, hi, hello, hello, hi, 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 for months. But when we come back from this break and time has gone too fast, we are going to touch on the DM Chronicles. And not just for a good laugh, because it is funny, I ain't going to lie, but the lesson behind it, mm. why these conversations are happening and how we can improve them. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of What Matters, and I am here with poet and awesome chicken general, <laughs> Lamoy Simmons. Um, one, I'm going to read you a quote from her website that mm -hmm. really resonates with me. The way we use language is divinely and directly connected to the level of our faith and our spiritual and emotional intelligence. Mm. I believe in words. I believe yeah. in their power. Yeah. I believe in their specific meanings. There are a over 170,000 words in the English language, all mm. with meaning. Mm. So I think how we choose to use these words are very important. And um, for this segment, DM Chronicles, 
Apparently, the words "hello, hi, hi, hello, hello, hi, beauty queen" are are the extent of certain people's yeah. vocabulary. So, how did the DM Chronicle start? Why do you do this? Why are oh you my an God. exposer? What's going on? <laughs> an exposer? That's so. That's a lot. <laughs> um, I this has been going on for a couple of years. My DMs are always full. They're always brimming with men trying to interact with me, and get to know with me. Um, get to know me. And I realized there's a pattern in the way men approach women. A, they don't know shit. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, and a lot of their approach is steeped in misogyny. Okay. Men are unable to accept that a woman does not want them. And they have no like reference to the, the, the right way to approach a woman. Online, we're all anonymous. We all have masks. And we feel like we can say whatever we want. And they're so bold and they're so brash sometimes. And I was like, no, this shit needs to stop. Uh, so I started putting it out there just for people to um, understand this is what happens in, in, in women's inboxes. People don't believe that no. men do this. I'm going to show you, this is exactly what your brothers, your fathers, your <laughs> uncles, <laughs> this is what they spend their time doing. Right. And women, we are told to be nice to men, yep. we're told to be polite to men, we're told to be happy that Don't a hurt man... Don't feelings. Right, that a man's interested. I'm not happy. You're annoying me. You're <laughs> wasting my time. You're frustrating me. I'm going to show other people, this shit is not okay. Absolutely. And it just kind of took off. It, well, it definitely took off because I know it is a for, one of my great amusing things. People I love it. I love it. So, Anisha, can you throw up one of the um, DM Chronicles for us? Okay. Okay. Your eyesight is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. And as you can see, um, A, I hate waves. Don't wave to me. It's Don't do it. We're online. You can't wave. Right. Um, but I'm, I always start out very nice. Very polite. I, I believe in human interactions. I believe that they're worthy. Right. So if someone says hi to me, I'm going to interact with them. And Hi, how are you? What's going on? So he tried all three initially. Hi, hello, what's up? Yeah. And I said hi. Okay. How are okay. you doing? I'm well, you. I'm trying to be. I hope that's successful. That's so nice. <laughs> she said I'm so sweet. That's so nice. I hope I'm successful. I hope you have a great day. So you, what? You can let it be. Oh, my God. You can wow. let what be? You can let it be. Yeah, can we go to the... Right. Um, by letting me know you. Now I'm like, seriously? Mm. Yes, I love your image too. Thanks. Where so you she from? Said thanks. Where you from? You're not married. <laughs> you don't want me to know you. <laughs> then he calls me. Oh, good. On yeah. Facebook Messenger. Why are, you call why are you calling people? <laughs> Did that... Did the previous interaction give you any indication that I want that we called. should expand this conversation via phone? Right. Then right. he says, hey, you're not talking. I'm on a phone call. Oh, you have a boyfriend? So I'm, you know, answering questions. I was born in Jamaica. No, I'm not married. No, I don't have a boyfriend. You're single. I just said that. Um, I want to know you. Yes, I'm single. Okay. That's that cool. Mean? Um, how much can I know you? Do you have kids? How, why are you interrogating me? Yeah, but not only that, this is Facebook. Go click on my profile. Right. <laughs> I'm very transparent. Everything right. is there. If you just scroll a bit, you'll see she has a chance. Right. So I'm like, you know what? We're Facebook friends. That's good enough for me. No, I want more. Calls me again. You can't answer? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I told you I'm on the phone. I want to know you. You don't need a boyfriend? Yes. Whoa. You've been saying that. Wow. <laughs> yes. Whoa. Like, Erica's like, I didn't read this one. Right. Wait, but you know what I find amazing about that one? I want to know you. Now, if any of you have ever had toddlers, have been a victim of a toddler, <laughs> have been the aunt or uncle of a toddler, right. you understand that they are just unleashed, unhibited yeah. human beings that will tell you, this is what I want, this is how I want it, and you need to get it. Right. Now, we break that down to, you know, just not being socially conformed yet, because we haven't trained them. 
And some people manage to get all the way into their 20s and 30s yeah. and remain in toddler state. Yeah. I want to know you. Right. Now, during the break, we touched on this a bit, and, and Anisha can speak to it. Anisha, is there really zero minutes left? Or did you not start that timer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, I, I'm i very happy. I can say that some of the more extreme stuff, yeah. I'm, I have not, knock on wood, yet been a victim of. I don't get a lot of, I don't get any mm. body pics. Or oh, anything like pics, that. Pics. Yeah, they're, they're, I'm watch now. Watch yeah. what's gonna happen. <laughs> but, but that hi, hello, hello, hi, 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 hello, hello, hi, hi, hi. I have been a victim of it. And what I started doing in the last few months mm. is, as you said, at, women are trained to be to be nice. Yeah, just be nice. And I was speaking with someone actually on my way here, and I was they were saying, you know, why is it that way? And I said, this is thousands of years of of setup. And it's not just in romantic relationships, even in work environments. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll hear uh, women giggling at every joke that a man makes. And some will say, oh, she's flirting. That's kind of how we're trained. Yeah. You got to laugh at their jokes and you, you got to make sure they're, they're not offended or uh, they make right. you feel secure. Right. You know what I mean? Know your little woman's place and yeah. kind of look up. It's, you know, and make sure heels aren't too high. Um, yeah. And and that's how we're, again, we're taught to, to small, small ourselves up. up. Yeah. And with the, the hello, hi, hello, hello, and I'm polite too, where I'll, I'll respond, but there is conversation, and I have online friends. People, the only place I know them is online, yeah. and we have conversation. We talk. It, some of it is all typing. Some of it's even progressed to actually voice notes yeah. or phone calls. But there are people who know how to hold a conversation. Yeah. And... Sometimes I wonder, like, when I go through 50, hello, hi, hi, hello, 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 I'm like, isn't me, have I lost? No, I'm here talking to you right now. I obviously know how to talk to yeah. people. And there are men and women that will get in your inbox and start a whole conversation. But when you put up that barrier, there are a very large amount of men specifically, and I'm not picking on you, it is what it is, yeah. that do not respect it. And that's why I said a lot of the ways that men interact with women is steeped in misogyny and is steeped in toxic masculinity or even just um, their fragile egos. Men are unable to accept the fact that there's a woman, we don't want you, we don't want you. We don't want you. So the hello, the hi, hello, hello, I, um, I want to know you, I want this, calling people, we, I don't want you, we do not want you. It's 2019. Women have found themselves, right? Oh. <laughs> okay, so I say, oh my God, do these lines usually work on a woman? Every woman need a man, and Every I woman. need you. I never tell no woman that. How can you need what you don't know? I know you. That's why I say I need you after I want you. What do you know about me? You even know I have a kid. <laughs> you don't understand. Apparently, you do I not have, understand. I have no idea. I have no girl. idea. Um, I know you're cute and sexy and have sexy <laughs> fat lips and single and no kids. You look independently built, too. Independently built. <laughs> yes. Meaning you look very independent. Okay, I understand. Well, I'm not interested. I hope you have a good night. What? what? Why are you saying that? <laughs> Question mark. And I made it very clear. I'm not interested. What other reason do I need? I'm not interested. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Why? How you say that? For I like you. No, you don't. I do. Who you live with? Why does that? <laughs> why does that matter? Liking what you see is not the same as liking a person. And I'm instantly uninterested when someone is unable to tell the difference. I do. Who you live with? <laughs> Nothing about the way you approached me interests me in allowing you to get to know me on any other level than a Facebook friendship. Don't ask me any more questions. Have a good night. Go away. Bright Naras, you can delete me. <laughs> so, and, and, and please understand, and I know there are people out there going, well, you know, that's just one crazy fool. No. no. It's not one no. crazy fool. It is not 
And I hope this this episode lights <laughs> up with messages of women telling you, no, no, it's not. It's not. And there's something you touched on that, that you know, I want to emphasize. Is this idea that if somebody likes you, you need to be grateful that they right. like you. And accept them because, well, who knows when, you know, yeah. someone else will come around that likes you because you obviously have a tree growing out of your face. <laughs> like, it, it, that idea, and I saw this this horrible meme one day, and it said, you know, if you have somebody that, that calls you and you don't answer and they, they, they wait for you while you speak to other people, you got to thank God for them and, you know, smarten up and, and fly right. And there was a whole bunch of likes and amens and hearts and yeah. prayer hands. And I was like, what kind of toxic nonsense is this? Right. You're saying that you need to like somebody because they like you. Yeah. No. no. Um, and there's this, there's this resurgence in women loving themselves and women understanding we're not putting up with this shit anymore. Um, men need to know your, your, basic, uh, your basic approach is not cutting it. It's not cutting it. We're not, we're not interested. And look how many times I had to tell him I'm mm-hmm. not interested before he then cussed me and he told said, me well, that I'm right. Get you, you rude thing. Right. And delete me. Well, how about you just delete yourself? And I've never blocked anybody before, and I blocked him. Why? How are you so bored that you have nothing else to do with your time, that you're going to hop up yourself in someone's inbox who has made it clear not she does not want you, and you're going to persist and persist and persist? Go make some money doing something. But Go you think, cut your lawn. Like, leave me alone. But do you think maybe, I always thought it was like the big net theory. You know, if you cast a big enough net, <sighs> someone's gonna, you, you're going to catch a fish. Someone's going to, and, and, and then my question is, who is sleeping with you? The tires of Right? The like, who, which women have let you into their body that you feel this shit is okay? Yes, I always wonder, I say to myself all the time, you know what? If somebody is continuing with this approach, what scares me is that I feel that it worked at some Someone point. Someone loves that. And it, it, that that in itself is just worrisome. But, <laughs> you know, the TED Talks, the the DM Chronicles, all of these things, if you follow Lemoy, Lemoy on Facebook, you will find her, Lemoy Simmons. Her, yeah. her profile is very public. And... There, there are a lot of lessons to be learned. We're not, I mean, there's a lot of good times. There's a lot of laughs. Yeah. But the conversation in the comments is really where the expansion and the learning goes. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time. No. It happened again. What is this? So we're going to protest and ask for my show to be longer. <laughs> but um, in the meantime, how do we reach you? You can find me um, on Facebook, Lemoy Simmons. Um, you can find my artist page as well, Lemoy, L-A-M-O-I. I'm on uh, Instagram at underscore queen underscore Lemoy. I'm on Twitter at Lala Ardor. And have a conversation with me. Uh, I love people all the time come into my inbox and they thank me for being bold and for being brave and for having these conversations. And that's how I know that this is a good thing. This is a good thing. It's a very good thing. And I'm really, really glad that you chose to spend your time with us this Thank evening. Thank you for having me. I, I'm, I'm pleased to have you. And guys, seriously, you know what? Take the time to have mm. a thought. Don't just surround with yourself with people with the exact same ideas as yeah. you because your mind will never expand past that point. It's not always comfortable to be challenged, but where you go and where you grow from there is such an amazing thing. So I look forward to you joining me next week. Andrew will be back, Coach Drew, and we will be talking more about um, expansion and progression and, and, and self-exploration. So I look forward to seeing you next week. I thank you again. Thank I'm you. so, so pleased. <laughs> and you can reach any either of us. You'll find us on Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Twitter. I'm Erica Elita, a.k.a. Erica Edwards, and I'll see you next week, same time, same place.